four to six inch rainbow trout. So we're here at our local Agway in town. Um, this company, what is it, Mid-Atlantic Stocking. They, uh, you can buy all different types of varieties of fish, put your order in online. They drive around the state. They have different color beltways that they do or what routes they do, we'll say. And they drop off uh, different days. You have a pickup time. They're here for 15 minutes and then they're on to the next location. So. We just picked up 60 rainbow trout, four to six inches. It cost uh, like 210 bucks. So not a bad price. The fish are a little bit smaller than I wanted, but uh, the other places are a little bit further away that sell like, you know, fish that you can already catch. Um, you can buy them in different sizes, but I wanted to get some like 12 to 18, but uh, I waited till late and with uh, trout season on, every, everything was bought up, so I'll have to get on that next year. Um, so these are all smaller ones you'll see. We're going to put them in our lower pond. It's deeper, stays cooler. They should survive in a pond. They do other places. And uh, hopefully the bass don't eat them. And so that'd be an expensive treat. It's not real expensive, but I mean, if the bass eat them, it's $210 down the drain. But We'll let, keep you updated on how they do and hopefully they eat and grow and next year we'll have like 10 inch rainbows in there. So we're heading to the house to release them. All right, so there's a bunch of rainbow trout in here. They are four to six inch. Pretty cool. We're gonna set them in the pond and let them get acclimated for a little bit. Uh, they're nice little pre-packaged in these boxes. There's a smaller bag. Put them on, so pull the bag up. Like, put the rock right here. Okay, that's good. It'll just keep it from floating away. It doesn't look like any of them have died, so they all look real healthy, strong swimmers, and uh, no dead ones in there, so that's pretty nice. Being that they've been bagged in a box for who knows how long until they got to our location and took us a good 45 minutes to get home, but I'm going to let them sit in here for 10-15 minutes and we're going to release them. Alright, we're going to go ahead and cut holes in the bag and slowly dump them in and you'll be able to watch it from underwater. Let this camera go for a minute because there's, there's a bunch of them swimming around it. Look at them all right there. Come here. You see them? Mm -hmm. Cool. Like this, uh... Yeah. 
Look at them. Look at them all around the camera. Okay. Don't go over there, dude. We're getting real. Got her full, dude. They're all in front of that camera right now. This one there on my camera right now is awesome. It's pretty cool. It's right. You'll be able to catch these things. So you can, like I said, test ball. We're getting some great footage. We got black crappie and shiners. There's 50 black crappie. I could put a lot more in, but I've just been buying like 100 at a time and just keep releasing them. But uh, yeah, we're gonna let them get acclimated for a while before we release them. I got another bag of 50 to go put in the upper pond. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a nice school of black crappie in here. The bluegill and the bass are, are thriving. And we're gonna get some rainbow trout in this lower pond because it's pretty deep and they should survive. I've never seen, I don't know, the water's not, I have to go check on the outflow. The water's actually coming over the bank right here and flowing down into the woods. I haven't seen the water go over here before, but we've been getting rain every day. It's been crazy, but still the outflow down there. I just cleaned it out. Should be relieving the the water. I get. I've never seen water go over right here before. All right, so Jude, hold them up. Hold them up high. Here's our uh, black crappie. There's a couple that aren't doing well, so she, you know, because there was a hundred she saved for me, but she took some off for the couple that aren't doing well. And we're gonna release 50 up here. Just set the bag right here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let them get, let them get acclimated to this water temperature. I'm sure, it's colder. So our upper pond here is extremely high. Usually, there's a lot more bank exposed. It's uh, like over here and in the back there. The water's not normally this high. But I just ran the pipe through. There's two pipes here. There's nothing blocking the inlet of them so they get plugged up with leaves and stuff and then it empties right here it's not really flowing too well whoa so it's they should be running a lot more water than that with how, how high the water is and uh and then it goes over to where the fish are and that outflow valve into the woods into a creek um, so I gotta open this up. Okay. Right in front. Couple dead ones. Get them all out. Couple of them are eating. 
teleport dead. I'm not going to release the fish right here because some of them could potentially go right off the outflow pipe and then they'll be down in the shallow creek and not make it. So we're going to go down a little ways and release them. You can see here the, uh, the water's pretty clear right now. You can see the bottom. It drops pretty quick after this little ledge. It drops off to a couple feet and uh, it gets... I don't know, there was a diver in this pond that my wife told me said that with the dive watch it's 50 feet deep out out in the middle, so it gets pretty deep pretty quick. That's why I think if we put trout in this pond it stays cooler with the deeper water in the middle, they should survive. But we're going to go ahead and release the shiners in here and uh, the bait fish, they reproduce. I was trying to get more fathead minnows, they reproduce in warmer in, a, in colder water, uh, the shiners reproduce at like somewhere closer to 70 degree water, where the fathead minnows reproduce in like 56 degree water. So this water is still really cold. So we're gonna go ahead and release another 50 black crappie in this lower pond and uh, the shiners. All right, guys. I'm thinking this cold water is like shocking them because when we first put them in they're they're coming up to the surface and like kind of like you can see them they're breaking the breaking the surface but then after a minute then they're fine so I just think it's the cold water shocking them Okay, then make it bigger.